When you're prepping for a session, how do you determine which 20% of your effort will give you the best result? Uh, experience. I, I know exactly what I need to have prepped to, to, to do it, you know, um, and to do it well. That's how I determine it. Um, because there's always a balance between planning and then improving as you go. And I know the things that I need to have planned out well and the things that I can improv. So the things that the things that I can improv as I go, I don't need to plan those. I don't need to. Sometimes I do, but I don't need to. But the things that I don't want to have to improv, those are requirements for me to plan. And so out of those things that I plan, I just plan those things. Um, are some of them unnecessary activities? Maybe. But here's the thing. Um, once I have once I have the adventure planned out, like literally written out, like, let me let me show you. I'll just, I'll start. I'll pull up an example really quick of an of an adventure that I have planned out. Are you a game master looking to reduce your prep time, but you still want to run awesome games for your players? Layer Magazine is a D&D and RPG resource that I publish to my patrons every single month. Each issue contains two 5th edition adventures complete with maps designed for use on virtual tabletops and several other GM resources such as new monsters, magic items, traps, and puzzles. Become a DM Layer patron today, and not only will you get instant access to two issues of Layer Magazine, but also a slew of other benefits. DM Layer patrons get bonus content every month, such as additional 5th edition adventures and map packs, can come hang out with me over video chat, and help pick the videos I make. Learn more at my Patreon link down below. The Velvet Fists. Okay, this is a cool adventure. All right, so this adventure right here, this is an adventure I wrote for the Sword Coast Guard. Um, these are my notes for the adventure. I have an inciting action and, you know, um, the plot hook and I have different rooms and stuff. What's in the rooms and all this kind of stuff. I actually wrote read aloud text kind of for this. Um, very simple read aloud text, not very complex. And then I have. So these are my notes for one adventure. OK. This right here takes me quite some time to get done, but, but once I have this written, I can prep a game session in probably like an hour or so. Once this bulk of the work is done, it takes me very little time to prep a game session, minimal time. Um, if I've homebrewed it, you know, so I'll, I, I know the 20% for me is to read over my notes here refresh my memory of things and I'm ready to go. That's my 20%. Now, if 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 I didn't want to write all of that out, if I wanted to reduce my effort, then what I would do is actually let me I think I actually have a, a, an example from my Sword Coast Guard game of something I did that is my that is my 20%, my minimum amount of effort. Let me show you. OK, now now I'm going to show you. So what I just showed you for that, the Velvet Fists was me writing out kind of a draft for something that could be published. There was a lot of effort into that formatting, read aloud text, the whole works. That was not 20 percent. That was above and beyond. What I'm about to show you is is the 20 percent. So let me let's go over to there and then I'll show you my 20 percent. Let me zoom out a little bit. This is a dragon layer. My players fought a dragon. Um, I need to rotate. So for me, I need to have a map. So I drew a map. And then I need to know like the purpose of the room or what's in the room. So this is a layer of a white dragon. It's an ancient white dragon. And so I literally just have um, the contents of the room, ice mounds are in here. I have some giant ice toads, giant ice toads. Here's some details about what's in this room. Um, this right here with this information and then over here, I have parts of the map, treasure ledge. This is the dragon's layer right here. I have the map. I am most of the way there with this information. I'm pretty darn good. I can I can run an adventure 
with this information right here and I can improvise almost everything else. Um, and but that's that's because of experience and in practice, right? And then, oh, I need to rotate this. The back side of the graph paper, the back side of the graph paper has notes. Um, so I have notes about the ice toad rooms and then some other rooms here, a white Abishai room, a winter Aladrin room. And then I have some notes about the dragon layer right here. Um, and there were some, there were some minions. It had some ice, ice elemental minions that I made too. I don't know if I have that noted on here. And then I, and then I have the treasure hoard. I, I rolled the loot for the treasure hoard because I don't want to roll that necessarily at the game table, but that's it. You guys, two pages. The front page is the map with what's in the rooms. The back side has some details. That right there, that's my 20%. That's my 20%. I can make that in, how long does that take me to make a map, decide what's in the rooms, balance some stuff, make some notes on the map. That's probably like an hour of prep, maybe. And I can run an entire adventure on that. So that's my 20%. That's my minimum that I need to run an adventure that's like 80% of what I'm capable of running. Now, now, if you look at the first thing I showed you, the Velvet Fists adventure, I wrote out the whole adventure. It's like almost 20 pages long. That's like my 80%. Now, was, was the Velvet Fists adventure better and more fun and more well-developed than my Dragon Lair? Yeah, it was. It was like the Cadillac of adventures. I put lots of prep time into it and it was a better adventure, but that ice dragon adventure, the white dragon adventure was still a really cool adventure, right? It was very close in caliber to it, but I put a whole lot less time into it. So that's like my 20% that gives me 80% of my results. So if I'm in a bind, that's all I need to do to run an adventure and I can roll with that. You know what I mean? I usually do more than that. I usually do more than that, um, but I can easily run an adventure with just that. If I if I if I want to or need to. Do you ever plan dialogue for NPCs or is it mostly improv? Um, improv. I have I have notes about the dialogue, but that's it. Let me show you my notes for the dialogue for the wizard encounter with uh, my recent Curse of Strahd thing. Let me pull that up really quick. I'll show you what my notes are. Um, they're not they're not a whole lot. Everything else gets improvised. Um, all right. Um, Bad Mage's Quarters. Okay, role playing notes. This is it. These are my notes. He doesn't remember who he is. Um, well, I changed that. When we were actually role playing it out, I decided to ignore that note and I did it. My, <laughs> I, I did have him remember who he is. Um, I had some information about what he wanted. He, his goals, his motivations are to find his staff and spellbook, and he wanted to get back at Strahd. He's been watching them progress through his tower. Um, he, at first, he believes them to be agents of Strahd. He must be convinced otherwise. You know, that's it. These are my notes. This is this is what I use for my dialogue. Uh, so I know. The NPC's motivations, I know what his goals are, I know what he wants in the game world. When I have that information, I can improvise dialogue. Like, that's literally all I need. And then I just role play the NPC. So, like, I don't, like, in, in real life, when I'm walking around as Luke and I'm talking with people, like, I don't plan my dialogue. But I know who I am and I know what I want. And then I talk to communicate those desires to obtain, obtain objectives and stuff and, and, and whatnot. You know what I mean? So yeah, I don't plan dialogue. I never plan word for word dialogue ever. I just plan out basic notes like this, that they're role playing notes. They give me parameters, guidelines for me to follow to some extent, although I sometimes ignore them apparently <laughs> when I am um, role playing an NPC. So that's how I do it. I, I, I never write out word for word dialogue and then read it. Nah, that's that's kind of lame in my opinion. <laughs> I'm just going to improvise it. 
Ed says I occasionally rehearse NPC dialogue when I'm bored. This is what I do, actually, Ed. When it's game day, this happened for that wizard. Basically, the day of the game for Curse of Strahd, I was like brushing my teeth up in the bathroom or something or shaving. And I was literally pretending to be the wizard and I was talking to myself. I was like looking at myself in the mirror. I was practicing the voice I was going to use. You know, I was I was thinking about how I was going to role play the wizard and I was practicing the dialogue. I was just talking to myself. I was pretending to have a conversation with the players, you know, and then I was practicing just role playing the wizard. That's it. Now, the things that I practiced in the morning, did I do the same things in the evening when I ran the game? Probably not. The conversation was probably different, but I was getting in character. I was thinking about those things. You know what I mean? It, so I was practicing in a way, but I wasn't rehearsing what he was going to say necessarily. To some extent, yes. To some extent, yes. But not everything, because the conversation is dynamic. I, I, I might know how my wizard is going to open up, but I don't know where the conversation is going to go, what my players are going to say or do. You know what I mean? So there's an element of practicing. Um, I would not... For me personally, I wouldn't say it's rehearsing because I don't know what's ultimately going to happen, but it's definitely practicing. It's definitely walking through. It's it's kind of like establishing a mental model um, of how something might generally work or happen. You know, it's like guidelines. It's like a swim lane where the conversation might go. And I'm practicing swimming in that lane, um, but you can do lots of different things while you're in that lane. So but I'm practicing those things and we'll see how things go.